There was a high school basketball player from California who had hype levels just as high as LeBron and Kobe when they played. His name is Shea Cotton, a 6 foot 5, 220 pound high school basketball prodigy who was the number one freshman and sophomore in high school in the mid 1990s. Nicknamed the man child, one of Shea's most remembered high school games was when he dominated Kevin Garnett in an AAU game as just a freshman. When Kevin Garnett was talking about this game with Paul Pierce and other Celtics teammates, they were laughing at him because how could a guy standing at 6 foot 4 dominate someone who was 6 foot 10 in the paint? All KG could say was, y'all don't understand, this dude was LeBron before LeBron. He was in the same class in 1997 with Lamar Odom, Tracy McGrady, and Elton Brand. NBA champion Dennis Johnson said, he was by far the best and more developed than the rest. But Shea Cotton never played a single NBA game. Injuries, a battle with the NCAA, and other things held back his chances at the pros. Shout out to G Bree and Tribe for suggesting I do a video on Shea Cotton. Let's see if this video can hit 1,000 likes in the first day. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel if you like basketball and NBA stories. We just hit 50k subscribers recently, so shout out to everyone who was here before that and all the new subscribers. Before we get into Shea Cotton's high school career, let me tell you about his time growing up before that. He never really had a normal childhood. Shea Cotton was a child basketball celebrity in California as just a 12 year old. He had his story talked about on ESPN and had stories in the Los Angeles Times about him when he was just in the 6th grade. He was built like a college point guard as a 12 year old. Shea Cotton was 6 feet tall, 180 pounds, he was basically the size of Chris Paul in the 7th grade and kids would call him Michael Jordan because he was bald just like MJ. Shea could dunk on alley-oops already around that time and you can only imagine how unfair it was for kids at that age to play against him. His passing vision and skills were so advanced for a kid at his age. Shea once drilled four unaware teammates in the face with no look passes in a team practice. Cotton's passes were just too fast, too hard, and his peers simply weren't close to his game speed level. Shea was already known around the country before he played a varsity basketball game in his freshman high school year. At this time, he was basically built like an NBA starting guard. He was 6 foot 4, 220 pounds. He averaged 20 points and 7 rebounds. He led modern day high school to a 33-1 record. He had an article written about him in Sports Illustrated that summer where they said he was the best freshman in the nation. Shea always had a crowd at his games and a longtime AAU coach in California said this about him, the interest to see him to play was huge. With way above average crowds, it was almost kind of the way LeBron was in high school, way before the internet. Before the season even started, it got weird for him and his family off the court. He sometimes would come home from school to 20 people just sitting outside of his house waiting for him from people in the local neighborhood just waiting to leech off of him, to shoe company brokers, to sports agents. They would just come in, they'd eat with his family, and they'd ask him, what kind of car do you want to drive? What kind of house do you want to live in? His family would deny all of those offers. During that season, he wore 37 different sneakers, Jordans, Barclays, Pippins, whatever Nike scent he wore. A new pair every game. Shea said, I basically had a shoe contract in high school, to be honest, without the money. I grew up playing under a Nike endorsement. Shea was able to keep his head away from the distractions and he had an amazing sophomore basketball year. He averaged 24 points and 10 rebounds, he led his high school team to a 36-1 record and they won the state championship. Shea was the first and only sophomore ever to be named California's high school sports division 1 player of the year. One of the teams Shea beat during the year was Stephon Marbury's Lincoln High School team. He dropped 33 on them. He was playing in pickup games against Magic Johnson, Eddie Jones, and Jim Jackson. Shea was holding his own in those games, and he was ready for his junior year to be another great one. Shea ended up leaving modern day high school and transferring to St. John Bosco to escape all the attention he got there, which is a decision he regrets today. Shea said in an interview, that was the worst mistake I ever made, not staying at modern day. He broke a bone in his left hand 11 games into his junior season and it kept him out the rest of the year. Even though he only played 11 games, Shea was still selected as a parade first team All-American. Injuries slowed down his development as a player and he got injured again in his senior year, did not play one game of high school ball that season because of a shoulder injury he suffered in an AAU game against Lamar Odom's team. That injury hurt his player development, it also hurt his spot in the rankings. 
as other players started creeping up on him in the rankings like Baron Davis. But one recruiting service still had him ranked as the number two player in 1997. There was news that Shea would jump straight to the NBA out of high school in 1997, but he was committed to Long Beach State because he wanted to play there with his older brother James, but his brother left school early for the NBA, so Shea decommitted from Long Beach and accepted a scholarship at UCLA to play with Baron Davis, but he never got to play with Baron because the NCAA invalidated his SAT score. Shea was diagnosed with auditory learning, which means he comprehended better listening than seeing. The people who oversee and publish the SAT, the Educational Testing Service, confirmed this diagnosis and allowed him to take the test with extra time. The NCAA had tougher rules and they did not agree with the special conditions and denied him going to UCLA. This also was not Shea's first battle with the NCAA. Earlier in the year, they investigated into his Ford vehicle that they believed was given to him by UCLA so he would sign there. The investigation began when the NCAA learned that Baron Davis and Shea Cotton had obtained vehicles through the same dealership, but they both ended up getting cleared once the parents provided the car's documentation to them. Since he could not play D1, he went to a prep school in Connecticut to play basketball and get his grades right. After a year there, he committed to NC State, but the NCAA again denied his eligibility and he had to play junior college at Long Beach City College. Shea averaged 25 points per game there and led the team to a 33-3 record. Finally, after that year at Long Beach City College, he was declared eligible by the NCAA and he accepted a scholarship at Alabama. He was 20 years old now and most of his peers from high school were in the NBA by now. It took a toll on him and he was tired of answering the same questions from the same people. Like what went wrong? Shea said, I was ashamed of myself because I let myself down. I'd wake up like, I want you to take me in my sleep, like literally. When they tell you that you are the biggest thing in LA other than Magic Johnson and you're in high school and then you're at Long Beach City College. Shea ended up dealing with this by contemplating which way he should take his own life. One day he took his car and drove it in the middle of a deserted road and pulled out a weapon from his glove compartment, held it to his head, with his other hand, he called his girlfriend and was very close to pulling the trigger. Shea said it wasn't a scare tactic. Living was hard. It was a dark place to be in. His girlfriend was able to calm him down and Shea snapped out of the dark place he was in that moment. He told the USA Today, I caught myself and realized that I would hurt a lot of people close to me. I'm better than that. I'm stronger than that. I can endure this. In his one year at Alabama, he averaged 15 points and 4 rebounds and was selected to an all-SEC team. A problem that year was Shea did not agree with how the coach placed him at the power forward spot. Another problem was that Shea never had another growth spurt from his freshman year of high school. He was still effective in the paint, but Shea stayed at 6'5", and that strength and size he used to dominate high schoolers with, scouts did not buy Shea would be able to do that against 7 footers in the NBA, he was just too short. The scouts and evaluators also had doubt about his perimeter skills at the next level. Shea had two years of eligibility left at Alabama, but he decided to hire an agent and declared for the NBA draft. He wasn't selected in that year's draft and it really shattered his confidence. Shea said, it was an embarrassing moment, it was devastating to work so hard for so long and to not get your name called, it's shattering. People need to know about those type of experiences. From 2001 to 2010, Shea would play overseas and return back to the States to play in the NBA Summer League and make an NBA roster, but teams did not find any use for him on a roster. He retired from basketball in 2010. He is now 39 years old. He's a basketball trainer at his own academy, an AAU coach, and speaks to high school players across the country. He has made peace with how his life has gone and believes he can have a greater impact sharing his story than he could have with an NBA career. When I hung my sneakers up and my daughter was born, I knew the fight was over. As an athlete, you never want to hear you're not going to make it. So when I realized my NBA dream was shattered and I got tired of traveling to play the game that I love, I had peace. I developed a different type of piece. I've been through a lot of dark times. And that is the story of Shea Cotton, a guy who was once the consensus best high school player in the country, but a number of events derailed his chances at playing pro basketball. Shout out to the people who suggested that I do this video. Definitely an interesting story. And shout out to everybody who made it to the end of the video. I hope it was interesting to listen to. Shout out to Shea, who's making the best out of what happened in his life. I'm going to do a part two to the body transformations videos that I made like last week. So I'll see you guys then.